I've done a lot of these methods where, you know, you play these finger patterns and they're all about covering every possible combination that your fingers can make. And the theory is that if your fingers move in every single pattern, like, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, and then one, three, two, four, and you know, and you just move them in every possible pattern, you move your pick in every possible way, you'll be prepared for every possible song you could ever want to learn. And that sounds, that sounds great. But you know, not, first of all, not everybody wants to be a rock star. And secondly, we're not computers. And in my opinion, it makes more sense to focus on the techniques that you're actually going to use when you are playing songs or writing songs or doing whatever it is. You know, um, I've learned hundreds, if not thousands of songs, and I've never learned a song that goes like, you know, there's, there's got to be something out there like that. But most of the time it would go something like this, like, And in a previous lesson, we covered two essential exercises that'll help you with single note melodies. And I'll put those in the corner. And while you're at it, I would appreciate if you could take a moment to like the video, hit the bell icon and subscribe to the channel. That way you'll be notified of new lessons and it really helps support the channel and enables me to keep bringing you these free lessons. Also, all these exercises are tabbed out on a worksheet. I'll make that available on my Patreon page. There's a link below for that. Anyways, today I'd like to cover the other picking thing that you will 100% end up using in real songs. The official term is arpeggiating, and that just means picking the notes of a chord instead of strumming them all together. And for that, I have a couple exercises that I'd like to share with you. First, we wanna get used to arpeggiating, and it can be as simple as this. So I have an A minor chord. I'm starting on the A string and I'm just going down, 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 down. I'm just picking through all the strings. And when we do it that way, we want to be careful to make sure that the strokes are nice and even. And for that, I would start out by counting out loud, going one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And eventually I would use a metronome because a metronome has perfect timing. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And the metronome has the added bonus of you can adjust it and go a little bit faster as you get better at it. And eventually you're up to speed and you can, you know, like play it in a song and it'll sound super even. And that's the first way, you know, just all downstrokes. The other way we can do this is to alternate pick going down, up, down, up, down. And that feels a little bit trickier. Um, you know, as we do the downstroke on the A string, it kind of launches our pick over the D string. Then we can do an upstroke. And from that upstroke, I'm now prepared to go straight down into the next one. So it's all about using the downstrokes to launch over the next string. And the upstrokes, they're pretty straightforward. They just reset your pick. Down, up, down, up, down. And first you look at your hand. You know, and you do it slowly at your own pace with a metronome, counting out loud, etc. But then you want to do it without looking. And I find if I anchor by like lightly touching my pinky to the guitar, that helps me know where my hand is. You know, and this took me a while to develop this. Uh, like a year into playing guitar, I remember one day just being like, I gotta learn how to play without, without looking at my hands. So I just went into my room at night, I turned off the light and I just practiced in the dark and that actually helped out a lot. So you can try it if you want. Either way, you'll wanna try this with all of the chord shapes that you're comfortable with, even going as far as putting some together in a progression. And if you're not sure like what progressions to play or what strings to pick, you can just take finger picking songs like um, Unchained Melody or Can't Help Falling in Love. You know, any song where the picking is just straight up and down. Um, my finger style lesson for Hallelujah is perfect for this actually. I'll put a link in the corner for that. Um, you know, and you just work your way through it with the pick the same way, pick the same strings as the finger picking but only using your pick. Um, you could even do some tunes where the picking goes in a bit of a different order, like Simple Man by Leonard Skinner. Once you've gotten used to that, over the course of a few weeks or even a few months, 
we can integrate this technique with some strumming. And of course, you'll want to be comfortable strumming on its own. Then you'll want to be comfortable arpeggiating on its own. And once you're good at each of those on their own, you can put them together and you'll get some really cool results. Um, I'm just going to use a D chord here. And for the strumming pattern, down, down, up, down, down, up. So you can see the pattern there. You can see how it all lines up with the counting. And when we pick the D chord, we're going to start on the D string and just go to the top string. And we can either do four down strokes in a row, down, 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 or we can go down, up, down, up. I recommend just picking one, sticking with it till you're good at it, and then trying the other one. Eventually you want to be good at both because you never know what you're going to run across in these songs that you're learning. And then, yeah, you just do the strumming pattern, down, down, up, down, And as I'm strumming, like my arm is making nice big motions so I have a good smooth sound. And then as I go to pick, I have to get into anchoring. So it's kind of like we're getting used to going between these big motions and then these little motions. And that's the real trick, you know, down. And you might have to sacrifice the first note of your picking, you know. You might go down, down, up, down. You know, and maybe you'll miss a couple notes, right? And it won't be perfect. But it's more important to have that motion stay nice and smooth than it is to like pause. I don't want you to pause as you go between the two. You know, just sacrifice the notes, pick the wrong string. It's totally worth it. And in the long run, you will gain that accuracy because you are getting used to switching between the motions. So that's, you know, kind of counterintuitive, but it's going to lead to better results in the long run. And you'll want to practice this with any chord that you like. You know, I'm using the D chord because it's kind of the easiest. It's all on the edge of the fretboard. But, you know, just pick whatever is easy for you and just experiment a bit. And this is something that you'll find in a ton of classic rock, like, you know, Zeppelin, like Stairway to Heaven. Uh, I don't know. Uh, that Boston tune. I don't actually know it, but it's something like that. Uh, Stone Double Pilots, pretty much the same progression. You know, it's it's all over the place and chances are you've found some songs that use it and that's why you're here right now because we gotta learn that technique. Either way, that's all I wanted to cover today. Don't forget to grab your copy of my free lead guitar ebook. There's a link in the corner and down below for that. I also have a worksheet with all of these exercises tabbed out for your convenience. You'll find a link below for that too. Don't forget to like and subscribe, help support the channel so I can keep bringing you these free lessons and please leave a comment if you have a question or even just to say hello. Take care, have a fun time practicing, and I'll see you soon.